the key ideas that we see are that the brain learns what it practices with good feedback on improving you know that practice and so what that means in the classroom is to is rather than have a teacher stand up and give tell things to the student instead the teacher carefully designed problems that the student has to work with uh, it's op it optimize the learning if they work in small groups three or four students working through those problems with the, the teacher monitoring what they're doing what they're thinking what they're struggling with and then regularly coming in and giving feedback then to guide them they can ask questions can everybody understand it and then and then the student goes back to continuing working through the problem and so this this idea of the, the essential idea is practicing the thinking you want the stu the learner to 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 gain with guiding feedback uh, as they're going through that process They just have to start measuring what teaching methods their faculty are using and reward the ones who are doing it, you know, doing a better job. I, you know, I, I don't see anything wrong with, with evaluating research and research productivity. What it, the, the problem is just they completely ignore teaching as if everything is equivalent or there isn't good teaching and bad teaching. Now we know there's clearly more effective teaching. That has to be part of the ranking systems in the same way that you know, universities both generate new knowledge, it's valuable to have faculty members who, who have the deepest understanding of the subject so they can convey that, they can teach it to students that same way. And so I think it's just, it's just the imbalance now and we know no, enough now to, about what's good teaching, what's bad teaching, that it just has to be put in place, that you're really measuring and evaluating and rewarding and ranking on that basis. Uh, at this point, we don't really need more research. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's always opportunities for research, but we just need to, to have universities start paying attention to what teaching methods are being used. I mean, I, I like to use the analogy that, you know, the way we're doing it now is equivalent to a hospital saying, well, some, some of our doctors are using bloodletting and some are using antibiotics, but we don't bother to measure what each of them are using. It's just up to their choice. And, you know, it's crazy uh, when you know one works so much better than the other. Yeah, I mean, what what the the science education initiative was was, you know, it was an experiment in trying to change an institution, trying to, you know, at a, at a large university, the the department is really the key element. It decides what to teach and how to teach, whether it's you know the physics department, the biology department, and so on. And so, that was really an experiment on a scale no one had tried before. Could you change entire departments, how they teach? Change them to switch from their old traditional methods to these new, more effective methods. And so a whole lot went into the design and testing and results from that. You know, I ended up writing a whole book on it. But, uh, but the key ideas where we developed an incentive system for both the departments and the individual faculty and to, to change their teaching, and then we s developed support to help them understand, and it was important, not just what good teaching methods were, but what good teaching methods were and how you applied them to teaching the subject you would be <laughs> needing to teach. And, and so they could, in that way, we developed the, teach the expertise in teaching in the discipline among the faculty and made that a standard within a department. You know, I think the, the basic mission of universities is much the same as it's always been, which is, you know, providing a higher, you know, higher education, a, the, the, the highest 
reasonable level of education that you can expect to provide to students. I guess it's, it's much as society and our technology has changed, we need many more students to have this higher level of thinking capabilities. And one of the key things, I mean, nowadays is computers can do an awful lot and computers are, you know, and robots are replacing people for an awful lot of things. And so what's really that now what a person provides is thinking capabilities that go beyond what you can easily get from a computer. So that means, you know, doing menial labor, it means doing menial, you know, routine calculations are not very valuable anymore because computers can do that. But so, you know, what people uniquely can do now is make decisions. When you don't have all the information, you have to weigh a lot of different factors. And that's really what thinking like a scientist or an engineer is. And that's what we teach. You know, that's what the methods I talk about, that's what they really are uniquely effective at teaching, is that kind of novel thinking capabilities involving making better decisions. And so, so I would say that that's always been important for universities, but it's more important now. Uh, they, the, you know, that dominates other kind of more routine things that might be learning, and that makes it all that much more important to adopt teaching methods that really are much more effective at developing those decision-making capabilities for students. If, you know, I look at data, <laughs> and if you look at data on MOOCs, particularly look at data on learning from MOOCs, it's pretty dismal. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm far from convinced that they're really very meaningful. I mean, you know, maybe if you can't afford a textbook and you can look at something online, okay, then maybe the MOOC's better than nothing. But if your alternative is a is a you know a, a real university experience where you're actually thinking and getting feedback and interacting with people to justify arguments, the data shows that's so much better than MOOCs uh, that uh, you know I I I have trouble taking them seriously uh, kind of as a replacement for good a good university. I mean, I, I should say also, you know, if you, you look at some of the data on MOOCs and when people get excited, they always say, oh, you know, 150,000 students took this MOOC. Yeah, and then you look at how many completed. Well, it was, you know, half of 1%. You know, if you, if you go to a university here and said, well, yeah, I did a great job. You know, half of 1% of my students were successful in completing the course, you know. <laughs> It'd just be laugh, you know, just be ridiculous, but somehow people don't pay much attention to that, you know, and then they never even look at the kind of learning, real learning measures that, that you know, I and people who do research like myself do, so, anyway, so. <laughs>